Hey guys. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Hey. Good evening. Kevin, I spoke to Doug today and he's taking care of it. Oh. Hello, Bob. Hi. I'm not sure, Mr. Bigfoot, I don't recognize you, but I let you in anyway, even though you're not using your name. Joe, put your real name in there. I hope everybody Hi, has a warm Hi. day today. Recording pause. I'm gonna take and mute everybody somehow or another. Hey, that's Brian. Excuse me. Yeah. I'm gonna mute me. Yeah, I guess everybody could just mute themselves. I'm having problems muting everybody. Um, oh, I gotta get my armrest tool on. Kevin, now you've got yourself muted. Shoot. Can't hear you, Kevin. Kevin can't hear you. <clears throat> Kevin? Can't hear you. Unmute, Kevin. Kevin, we can't hear you. Unmute yourself, Kevin. <laughs> and in conclusion, <laughs> I'm being told I'm muted. Hold on one second. Can yeah, everybody hear me? Your head. Can hear you now. Okay, sorry about that. I hit the wrong button before. So um, we're going to do just a quick four or five minutes of some business to go through, and then I'm going to turn the meeting over to Sam. For the demonstration, um, while you're uh, listening to me, Sam said documents. There are two documents in your email from the club site that are uh, two of the things that he actually sent to me. Um, there's four documents that are up on the document section of the website. So there's actually a PowerPoint up there. There's a selection of Sam's preferred woods. There's a uh, conversation about uh, being able to spread things, what's good, what's not. Um, and uh, there's, it's up on the website. So we should be able to take and uh, uh, be able to get stuff together and uh, have some stuff to be able to show in another, um, in another show and tell. So, and knock that thing off there. Let me take a look at that. Um, so the first thing I wanted to talk about, uh, unfortunately, um, is, is probably that most of you may have seen the email, um, regret to inform everybody that's uh, an Atlantic Shore Wood Turners group member that knows Roger Doty. Uh, Roger passed away uh, just recently. Um, so may he rest in peace. Um, I uh, didn't have a real uh, ability to know him well. Most of the time I was a member, he was unfortunately sick and ill. But for those of you that can, um, I strongly suggest you drop a note to his wife or just to send some uh, regards and thoughts along to her, I'm sure she would appreciate it. Mm -hmm. I think it's a good thing to do. Um, secondly, uh, you have seen the uh, wig stand challenge. Uh, Doug came up with a really good one this time. And Jesse Abrams actually put together a really good capability for us to be able to uh, use these for a charity piece. So we are giving them to the Breast Cancer Center in Princeton, New Jersey. It's run by the YWCA. Mm. They provide free assistance and care and, <clears throat> and things for women uh, who are post uh, <clears throat> detection of breast cancer or other types of cancer. So the wig stands are coming to uh, great use. We've got a bunch of them already up on the website. I would show you, but I'm going to pass that for right now um, and so that we can do for uh, the uh, demonstration. But I've already got uh, Jessica and uh, Bob Amaranth, myself, Doug. Um, there's a bunch of really nice ones up there. I think there's nine wake stands up there so far. We'd like to get about 30 of them. 
to donate to the uh, the uh, charity. Uh, Charlie Ambriano has already agreed to, if, if we need to, to drive them over there. Um, and we're also trying to see if I can put together, we have uh, people in the North Jersey Club that are helping us out and they're going to be turning some. Bob actually has done three so far. Um, and we've extended it out to the Southern Bayou Turners, our guest club uh, that we've been working with together. Uh, Bobby is working with uh, the folks down there to see if they want to participate as well and then donate it to a local charity. Um, but it, it, it's a really good opportunity. And what I'm planning to do is to take some pictures and write an article and send it to the AAW so that they can um, you know, see what we've done and what we've put together. Hey, Kevin. Yeah. Kevin. Question. Yeah. You're getting a lot of echoing. Um, let me see if I can mute everybody else out. I'm going to see if I can mute everyone. Why is it that I can't? I don't have a mute screen here from you just, everybody. You just came okay. You sound better now. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on. I'm, I'm struggling. Usually I can mute everyone. For some reason, it's not on my screen tonight. Yeah. And Evan, one other thing. could just take and mute themselves. That would be really helpful. I'm going to try and uh, mute everybody else out, uh, but it's so far not working. Um, and then lastly, I want to turn oh, the. Um... Kevin, hold on, hold on. Uh, so our other YouTuber, Moving Chips, Jay Chauncey, he published a video today on how to make the wig stands. I'm going to do one probably on Thursday. Right? <clears throat> so how to make them? And there are a lot of fun about me too, and he's been creating one to his to his. Um, uh, cousin who's suffering from cancer right now. I plan to make a couple more. I strongly encourage the New Jersey wood turners to jump in on this. It's a real easy project and they're fun to make. Okay. Yeah, it's been working out pretty well. Videos on YouTube about this from uh, our club soon. Cool. Okay. So I'm going to turn this over um, one second to Bill Stewart. Soon they find you, Bill. I'm going to un unmute you. Can you I'm on mute. Off, Bill, and then I'm going to take and make you a spotlight video. Go ahead, you're on. Thank you. Um, anybody that's part of the Atlantic Shore Wood Turners Google Group list uh, got an email from me this past week, looking at the possibility of holding a discussion group, which I'd like to do, say, once a month, on a Tuesday evening, someplace between our meetings. So kind of like the middle of the month, end of the month type of thing. And what we would do is pick a topic. Um, I would send out some questions that hopefully would come from the group on the topic, things that you want to talk about beforehand and do this on zoom uh, for an hour, hour 15 minutes. <clears throat> I got a fairly positive response. Um, about 10 people or so said, yes, yeah, sounds interesting. I'd like to try it. So the only purpose of me uh, talking right now is that you'll get more from me this coming week on it, but it is something we're moving ahead on. Okay, cool. Kevin, I'm done. Cool. And thank you for doing that, um, Bill. I think it's going to be an interesting thing to do. It'll allow us to continue to get more usage out of our uh, Zoom account, that's for sure. So, cool beans. All right. Has I have, I have the only one person that I haven't muted now is Sam, so I must be getting feedback from Sam. So I'm going to just. Hello. Sam, are you ready to go here? I'm ready. Okay. So without further ado, I'm going to turn the uh, screen over to Sam. I would appreciate if everybody mutes themselves unless they have a question for Sam as he goes. Sam, I look forward to this uh, demo tremendously. I'm going to spotlight you. So you're in for everybody here, and we will go. Screen's yours. Thank you very much. I appreciate you inviting me to demonstrate thread chasing. Um, where to begin? Yeah, if anybody has a question or a comment, uh, I don't mind at all. I welcome interruptions. Just uh, shout out a question. Sometimes I get a little bit off base and. Uh, it helps me remember things I forget sometimes if you bring something up. And if I don't cover something, which is really difficult to do unless I spend nine hours doing this, I, I can't really cover everything in too much detail. And I don't want to cover thread chasing in a tremendous amount of detail because 
you know, people would be leaving in 20 minutes. So uh, I, you know, I, I keep reminding people and I'm going to show you some of my my boxes here that I've got in a, a little tote. <clears throat> you know, you can turn anything that I chase threads in with a slip fit, you know, uh, or some of my mallets I glue together, um, not just with threads, but you know, you can make anything um, that I'm showing you here. Well, let me, I've got a, a big pile of stuff here. Um, got a lot of videos on chasing threads and about 10 or 11 years ago, in fact, well, I've done two articles on chasing threads and one of them I sent to Kevin and it's on, on your website now. I sent the text, I'm gonna follow up with the pictures in another email I'll send, I'll send out. But when I started writing my first article about 10, 11 years ago, John Barkley found me on YouTube and we started communicating. And I really started looking at uh, Alan Batty. He's got a great, Alan's passed away, but he, he had a, a great video <clears throat> DVD, I should say, on chasing threads. And I think that's a good place to start. It really covers a lot of the aspects that are important to thread chasing. But anyway, I started talking to uh, John Barkley of All Screwed Up. And your clubs may have his video series. I've got every one of his, his DVDs. And he really taught me how to chase threads. I won't, I could talk more about John. He's a terrific, terrific guy. I don't think he's uh, really turning much anymore, but this is a really good book. And, and uh, there's lots of projects and uh, the projects in here mostly are puzzles, which I've, I've turned a few. I need to do some videos on these, these puzzles and they're just, they're really cool. Um, John Barkley was good friends with, uh, um, Bill Jones, and you might be familiar with this, this book. There's two books, uh, Notes from the Turning Shop and Further Notes. Uh, Bill Jones used to write for Wood Turning Magazine, and this is a compilation of articles he wrote for Wood Turning. Um, Bill died in uh, 2011, I believe. He was, I don't know, 90, 91, but really, really cool book, and anyway, I. I'll stop there because I can start talking about history and we don't want, we don't want to do that quite yet. <laughs> anyway, um, I've got four cameras that I'm aware of that I can, I can, <laughs> that I can move around. And if you'd rather see a different view, uh, you're, you're sure welcome to, to let me know. Anyway, I've, I've got an overhead camera that I'll, I'll move around. And sometimes I forget to move my cameras. My wife is sitting here and she will remind me if the screen doesn't look very good. Anyway, I'm going to just very quickly show you some of the, the little boxes I've made. And uh, I, I won't take every one of these apart. A lot of these I've got a video on. Okay. And this is just, this is some boxwood. And I've got literally one piece of boxwood left and I use it very sparingly. I won't take all these apart, but they're all threaded. Did a little bit of texturing and, and boxwood is, um, it's lovely wood, but it's not the prettiest wood in the world, if that makes any sense. But it's really good for, for doing a little bit of texturing on there. And I texture everything. Um, yeah. Here, here's a, th this is a Jimmy Clues knockoff. I got, I got a lot of Jimmy Clues' DVDs and he did a box that looks very, very similar to this. And he textured the top of that. That's got a, um, a black, word, black wood insert that I textured. And a word about plagiarizing. If I copy something from you know, a well-known Turner. Not that Jimmy invented this design or anything, but I'm not going to mass produce this and sell this. Okay, that's kind of where I draw the line. 
I'll probably keep this or give it to one of my granddaughters because um, that, that's an important, uh, important issue. Um, the, the piece of what I've got in my lathe right here is uh, lignum vitae, and that's going to be the base for my box. And the, the form that I'm going to kind of use for my, for my box, let me see if I can get this. All right, let's, let's try this. These are a couple, uh, they almost look like hollow forms. But one of the issues in chasing threads is as you're chasing the female thread right here, you can have a shoulder uh, or a wall back here that you'll run into. This is a really good shape if you're just um, beginning thread chasing because you don't have any, any wall back here. You can just chase your female threads and they're a lot easier. So that's kind of the shape I'm going for. Here's, a, here's another one. Okay. So if I were, let me just pick one here. Th this is threaded. Okay. And because the shape kind of goes out this way on the female thread, there's no shoulder to contend with. Makes it a little bit easier. Somebody mentioned they, they, uh, they turn cast resin or acrylics and you can almost see, in fact, you can see the threads through this. This threads like a dream. And, you know, I started looking at these boxes and it's like, I'm really <laughs> kind of um, turning a lot of this kind of a, a shape. I've got a, a solid base and a lid. All right. And they're, they're really nice. For some reason, I don't like to cut cast resin, you know, in two and make a, you know, a two thirds, one third kind of a um, project like that. Uh, let me just pick one or two more here. I need to move on. Um, I've got a couple mushrooms and <clears throat> the, the top of my mushroom here is some boxwood and this is bubinga. And that takes a fairly good thread. Um, you may ask about stabilizing with CA glue. I don't like to do that because I've got a lot of uh, woods, various wood that I can chase threads in. Now this is uh, box elder. Okay, doesn't, doesn't take a good thread. So I've got a little box wood insert in there. And I've also got a, an, uh, the corresponding insert or, or part of that. Um, I'm not even sure what that wood is. I got too many wood, woods. Anyway, um, I may go back to a couple of these later on. If we can, if we can see this one right here. Let me see if I can move this in just a little bit. That's not the right camera. Wh which camera am I? <laughs> it's like, where am I at? It's okay, dear. Let me let me change my. There, I there, that's the camera I want anyway. Okay, so if if we look at this uh, cutaway of, uh, in in preparation for thread chasing, I've got the area right here that I'm going to chase my thread in the female thread. I've got this area right here, which is the stop gap. Okay, and I'll I'll show you that when I start chasing threads, but. Back here, there's a shoulder, okay? And that can cause you problems if you don't remove your thread chaser in time. Uh, you can strip out your threads. Let me show you one more little little box, which is, you know, really cool. And this is something that I, uh, I kind of stole from John Barkley. This is threaded, you know, the, the box. But this part right here, this is some um, alternative ivory on the lid with, with a, a knitting needle right down the center. And that's all threaded together. I won't take that apart. Trust me, it's there. Okay, now I'm gonna start with um, a PowerPoint and then I'm gonna go to my project and I'm gonna go into a, a video. Um, I, I don't wanna just show you a bunch of, you know, film videos and, and whatnot to begin with. So I'm going to break it up a little bit is what I'm what I'm trying to say. So here's my 
uh, my video on um, sharpening. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll kind of monitor this as we go along. So we're going to start with the female thread chaser. There's a good shot of that. I've got probably six different sets of thread chasers, including um, Carter and Son, uh, the Carter and Son thread chaser. Remind me, I'll show you that as we go along. And it's really a, a really neat design. So I'm going to put a little bit of a uh, magic marker on this, and uh, this will kind of show us where where I'm sharpening. This particular wheel is an 80 grit, and I just happen to be using that. I don't always use that platform. I'm just going to rest my hand on that or rest the tool on that. Uh, I can just kind of put that up there and sharpen it freehand. So I keep looking at my thread chaser and the, the magic marker is gone. So I'm hitting the cutting edge. You only sharpen the top of this. All right. Now I'm going to shut that off and see if I can. Okay. <coughs> All right. I wanted, I wanted to get something here that, to show you. Um, th this is a... Uh, Oh, it's a diagram of a conventional scraper on top, which has a flat top. Okay. And then a negative rake scraper looks like that on the bottom. Okay. It's got two bevels. Well, th this really comes from a video I did on, on scraping tools or something, but, um, a thread chasing tool really is a negative rake scraper. And the more you sharpen that top bevel, uh, the more forgiving it gets. You know, it, at first they start out like this on the top. They're, they're a conventional scraper until you start sharpening them. And they can be a little bit on the grabby side, if you will. Um, and that's, that's kind of an important point because you'll, you'll go, geez, why is that so? I'm getting little catches and it's, it's just kind of grabby. Well, that's the nature of a brand new thread chaser. All right, let's continue with some sharpening here. And I think I've about got that sharpened. All right. And you can see how much is worn away. Now here's the uh, external thread chaser or the male thread chaser. And I don't know if I've got a favorite. You might ask that also. Um, Craft Supplies puts one out, and I believe that's the one I'm holding right now. It's got a really nice short handle. Uh, you don't need a big long handle to chase threads. So I'll hold that up there, and I, um, I sharpen it kind of freehand to begin with, and then I'll go over to the other grinding wheel on the other side of my grinder, and I get the V-arm set up. These are really easy to sharpen. If you've sharpened a, a scraping tool, that's pretty much what you're doing. <clears throat> now please, if you have any questions, interrupt. Uh, I'm also going to show you sharpening my point tool in this little video. There we go. So here's another approach. <coughs> okay, I've got some, some more magic marker on there, my V-arm. <clears throat> and and this is probably a more accurate way to do this. You can remove your tool and look at it. I'm just adjusting the V-arm. <coughs> Excuse me, I hope you didn't hear hear me coughing and hacking. 
And, and this probably is a much better way to do this. <clears throat> this is my 180 grit wheel. And I'm going to sharpen a point tool. <clears throat> Now, let's see here. I'm going to show you. <coughs> I'm, I'm sorry. <coughs> I'm not used to talking. Here, here's a point tool. Let me show you a little bit closer view of this. Um, even if you're not a thread chaser, this is just a really marvelous little tool to have. Uh, obviously, this is not made out of metal, but you have a bevel and a bevel, three bevels, three cutting edges that converge in a point. And if I don't remember to do it, remind me, I'll do a little, a little demo with my point tool because they're just really cool for, for forming beads and, uh, and detail like that. So very easy to make and very easy to sharpen. I have a video on making a point tool. It, that irritates my wife every time I say that, but it's like, well, you know, if you want, you want to make a point tool. Okay, I think we're, we're heading towards the end of my little video here. Anyway, there's a point tool. Let's go back to uh, the project at hand and I'm going to do something different in this video more for myself than anything else. I hooked my dust collector up and I'm going to turn it on and let me know if it's like way too loud. My dust collector is actually through this wall over here. Uh, it's not in the same room. I'm just not sure how much that's uh, coming over my microphone. When it's not bad. It's not bad, Sam. It's not okay. bad. Okay. And when I turn that on, I'm not going to be talking. I'm going to be either turning or m maybe sanding, but I'm going to make the lid out of some, uh, some black wood and it's just nasty to turn. I, I just don't like that black dust and lignum vitae is a little bit irritating. If, if you know what I mean, it, it, it can be, it can be nasty. Now somebody, I got a shout out to my friend, Tom Ackley. Yeah, I've got, I use this and I also like Triple E. I've never used the Yorkshire grit, but um, this is good stuff and it's cheap. I mean, it's anyway, check that out. Uh, Tom Ackley, Ax, Ax Paste, I think they call it. So I'm going to bring up my, my tail center. Maybe it's, it's okay. Hey Sam, while you're doing that too, somebody asked in the chat, about the, um, do the, the threading tools come as pairs. Uh, can you comment a little bit about the thread sprint and the different potentials of how you would buy them? Yes, that's, that's a great question. Um, let me, yeah, let me just bring up a couple here. Um, I've got all my thread chasers color coded. Okay. These are 16s, which I'm going to use tonight. And, um, the 16 is, I guess it's my favorite. When I do um, sometimes boxwood or really, really dense wood, I'll use a 20. Um, when I'm using, uh, chasing threads in cast resin, I'll use a 20. It's a little bit finer and it's probably easier to chase threads in a 20 than it is a 16. Okay. But when you go to mate them, and you certainly can't see this, but um, the, the 16, you know, the, the height of the thread from the peak to the valley is bigger than the 20 and they're easier to mate. They're easier to make that connection. Okay. Um, I still have a little trouble with the 20. Maybe I just need to use it more. And, and again, they're, they're easier to chase threads, but I find, I don't think the 16 is a whole lot more difficult, but when you go to make the connection, I find the 16 a little bit easier. I've got a 10, a 12, 
Uh, another one I like is an 18. And that's kind of a combination or a, a you know, a, be, between a 20 and a 16. You know, and I use that quite a bit. So it's just, it's a matter of practice. Um, one, what would one, you recommend for a beginner? I'd recommend a 16. And, Thank you. And one, one of the issues, let, let's say I'm comparing a, a 10 TPI with a 20 TPI chaser. That has a lot to do with lathe speed. Okay, so if I'm using a 20, my, um, my traverse is a little faster. Okay, on a, on a 10, it's twice as slow. So my lathe speed can actually be slower. But starting a 10 or a 12 is really difficult. I mean, it, it's, uh, once you get it going, it's pretty easy, but it, it's a lot harder to start a 10 or a, a 12 TPI than a 20. Anyway, um, I didn't explain that very much in, in very good detail, but if you look at the article, uh, and it's in, I don't know, I don't know what issue of the um, American Woodworker it's in there, but I explain that in, in better detail uh, as far as the traverse. And the, the traverse simply is, uh, you know, going across your, your, your piece of wood, how fast you're moving that, okay? So uh, I'll, I'll try to reemphasize some of those things as we go along here. Now, this is going to be my lid. Okay, and I want to just kind of start with a little bit of um, design considerations. So my base is going to be solid, which in some respects makes it just a little bit easier for what I'm doing. <clears throat> Bring you in just a little bit closer on this. Now I've got this uh, Fibonacci golden mean caliper. Okay, a friend of mine gave me that. And if if I were just making this box into a regular one third, two thirds box, if you can see that, here be my lid, here be the base. Okay, somewhere in in that neighborhood would be my connection, okay? Now, if I enlarge this to the, the larger dimension here, and I'll allow a little bit on, on the end for parting that off, um, the top of my, my lid might be to there, you know, so I'm not gonna use all of this, and that just kinda gives me an, an idea um, where to go. I'm not gonna make a finial. My, my lid is going to be more like a handle, okay? Okay, now, let's get on to it here. I've hollowed this out a little bit. All right, you can see that. And I just kind of took the time to, to hollow that out. But I want to show you a couple, a couple things. I think there are, there are better tools to use other than a Forstner bit to, to drill holes. However, if you're drilling a really big hole like this one here, whatever that is, inch and a quarter or something, um, it's difficult to find a twist drill bit, which really would be my preference. Um, anyway, I've got that drilled out. I'm not sure what the dimension is, but I wanted to show you, and I, and I use a Jacob's chuck in my tail stock. Okay, what, what this is, is a a paddle bit, okay? And I've just rounded the corners off on that, put that in my Jacob's chuck, and I go down to the, to the bottom of my, my recess, and it flattens that hole and takes away that little point in, at the very bottom. Works great. Um, here's, a, here's another one, that's, that's an inch and a quarter. Um, you know what I'm, I'm talking about with a, with a paddle bit or a speed bit, whatever, whatever you call it. Just taking the, that and rounded that off. This doesn't fit. Well, actually, it does fit in there. Anyway, that, that's a really cool idea. It's um, in, you must yep. have bumped your, up, your hanging camera. Can you 
it's swinging a lot. Yeah. Okay, thank there, you. There we go. Okay, so in, I, I stole this idea from Dave Schweitzer from D-Way Tools. He did this in one of his, uh, in, in one of his videos. So that's, that's kind of a neat idea. That's what I did here. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to do just a little bit of uh, shaping on this. And, and this particular piece of wood almost looks taller than it needs to be compared to the diameter. Could, could you turn that? I've got heaters coming on. I'm not sure if you can if you can hear that or not, but uh, so we'll do just a little bit of shaping on this. And I may just turn my dust collector on because I've also got a computer 18 inches away here. get a spindle rough and gouge and I can go a little bit faster on this. I'm going to give you an end view here. I've got to be careful. I've got to leave enough uh, thickness right here for my threads, so I'll, I'll round that over just a, a little bit more. bit more speed. Now one thing I like to do is I'm going to take a parting tool and just sort of define where the bottom of my my box is going to be approximately. Okay, as, as I make adjustments uh, here and there, please ask a question if you'd like. Okay. I'm, I'm moving equipment around here. Get some of that stuff out of the way. Okay. Um, now, in preparation for chasing my thread, 
what do I need to do? I drilled this out with a Forstner bit. So this area right in here is, <laughs> okay, oh, my camera come, come unplugged. Oh, just just hang on it's okay <laughs> we're having a a little little malfunction here there we go sorry sorry about that okay that that gives you a a better view of what i'm doing on the the end grain there so the first thing i need to do is put a little chamfer right here where my threads are going to start and i'm going to introduce different tools as we go along here here's my point tool and the one tool that I'm going to use throughout the demonstration is my, my armrest tool. All right, let me give, give you this view. My armrest tool is hanging from a shoestring on my, around my neck. And this is a, a tool that goes back, we don't know how far, two, three hundred years, maybe, maybe longer. It allows for the turner to address end grain. You can hollow, you can chase threads. Um, it's, it's a marvelous tool. And think about every time I use this tool, um, I, I don't need to readjust my tool rest. Okay, let me just do a little bit of this. <clears throat> so I've got a little hook on the end of this this tool and it allows me to get in here right there I, I understand <laughs> my wife is giving me instructions here okay all right that's that's probably a better view right there Now the next thing I need to do, if you remember that one, that one little cutaway, I need to put uh, a recess back here or a stop gap. Hey Sam, that armrest tool, is that a self-made or did you acquire that somewhere? Okay, let me, the, the question is, um, is that a, a self-made tool or uh, I got this particular one at craft supplies okay and it's you know, if you find their thread chasers you'll find this you know 45 bucks and oh i never got to this thing pardon me one second um i did make one okay and it works okay and when when i used to travel you know, I'm always worried about, boy, if, I could lose any tool, but if I lost my armrest tool, I'd turn around and go back home. So I had, I had a backup, but it works okay. You can, you can make one. And if you're sort of a tool maker, you can probably do it a little bit easier than I did. So <clears throat> here's my, 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 uh, Let's do, let's do this overhead. Th this just creates a, a recess right, right about there. And you can see the curvature of my, my uh, box. And I'm going to undercut this and I'll have a little bit of room back there and I won't have that shoulder to contend with. Okay, so that's what I'll do next is uh, create that recess Sometimes that's called the stop gap. And I've, I've got marks on this. One is etched in there and this one is way too big. So if I aim for about, oh, I don't know, three fourths of an inch, that gives me plenty of room for my threads.
Okay. Now I'm gonna, I am going to turn my um, my tool rest around here. Just hang on. Yeah, that that vacuum works really nicely. Um, let's go to my end view. So the the toothbrush is really <laughs> an important tool. I don't always use my armrest tool. If I do any any hollowing, which I'm gonna I'm gonna save you from a lot of hollowing. I'm going to do just a little bit and kind of undercut this area right back in here. And this is, uh, I think this actually is a, a Dale Nish box tool. At one, at one point it probably looked a little bit prettier than that. So uh, I'm going to just get in there and undercut that just a little bit on the back side of my thread. Okay, let's try. Stop my lathe here and see. Yeah, actually, that that's probably all I need to do. Now, let me make an important point here. Uh, as I'm chasing my thread, I'm I'm leaving a little bit of this out just to save time. I'd rather spend more time on thread chasing than hollowing this out. Um, and it's kind of a common practice for. Uh, thread chasing demonstrators to not always hollow the base of their projects out. I can reestablish a tenon on this later on. I can get this 95% completed and tomorrow I can finish it. But right now I'm, I'm saving us all a little bit of time to just kind of move, move things along. All right. So I'm going to go back to my armrest tool, and I've got a I've got a pretty good uh, recess back there. Oh. There we go. We'll we'll show you this angle first. A couple tools I'm going to put put back in the rack. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> So we're going to start with with the female chaser and ordinarily I don't I can't think of a project where you would start with the male thread. Okay. Almost every time that I know of you're going to start with the female chaser and perhaps it's because it's easier to mate the male to the female than the other way around. So I've got my my tool rest at about a 45 degree angle because I need to start my chaser right here. Let's bring in this camera for just one, just one second. Okay. And I need clearance for my, my handle as I'm, as I'm chasing that thread. All right. Let me do just a little bit right there and I'm a little bit high on my tool rest. Now, lathe speed. Let's talk a little bit about lathe speed. Um, with a 16 TPI chaser, I like to uh, chase about 300, 350. That's 500. Let's go a little bit. I'm about 360. Now, When, when you're chasing threads, I move over here, <clears throat> you, 
You can go too fast, but the faster you go, probably the better. It's like if you're using a scraper, if you're going too slow, that can be a real problem. With a thread chaser, um, you get um, a, a drunken thread or a wavy thread if you're going too slow. If you're going way too fast, you'll get a double thread. And if you're having trouble connecting the male and the female threads, look at them very closely. And you'll see either a drunken thread, it's just kind of wavy, or you may actually see, uh, it's kind of like a thread on top of a thread when, you're, when your uh, lathe is turning too fast. Okay, so that's something you're, you're gonna deal with. It's experience. So if I can go 360, 370, there's no shoulder back there. I can just, I can just move my, my thread chaser along and there's nothing, nothing to run into, which is a, a real big help. So I'm gonna start on the second or third tooth. And, and what I do is I'm gonna pull my, my thread chaser back in, into the wood. Okay, so I'm gonna just kind of make this uh, little fainting motion here. And this particular thread chaser, this is a Robert Sorby. It's got a nice long uh, area for the threads. All right, now I'm gonna move my camera. Just bear with me. I just wanna bring this out just a little bit more so you can see the back of my handle. The, the last thing I want to do when I'm chasing my, my female thread is to push the thread chaser with my right hand, okay? That is not determining your traverse. What de determines the traverse of your thread chaser at this point are the grooves, okay? So let me do that again. So all I'm doing is I'm, my, my right hand isn't doing much. It's just kind of lightly holding the tool not, it's not pushing. So I, I pull the thread chaser into the threads. And that moves them along. Now I'm going to show you another view here. One, one thing that's really important is to hold your, your thread chaser as uh, level to the ground or the floor as possible. If I'm up like this, what happens is it changes the pitch of, of the uh, threads. So we'll keep, we'll keep going here a little bit, little bit more. I almost think I'm a little too high. On, on this camera, you can probably see what, what I can do with my, my threads or my, my thread chaser rather. If I'm, if I'm too low or too high, I can simply move my armrest tool up or down. And I want that just a little bit be above uh, the center line. Now, eventually I wanna move my, my thread chaser so it's perpendicular to the threads. So a little bit more on that and, I've, and I'll have it. Try a little bit more on this other camera. Give you a different perspective. All right, I'm gonna clean that out. Take a look at them. Quick question. Yes, sir. After a while, after the first couple of strokes, can you feel that you're in the groove or, or you really can't tell? You have to keep the motion as constant as you can or can you feel that you're in the groove? Okay, that is an excellent question and that really is the heart of, the, of thread chasing. Um, 
if I'm chasing threads at the very beginning where that chamfer is, okay, I've got to pretty much um, determine my traverse or that speed I'm going at by my experience. I can kind of get an idea. Once the groove is established, um, the thread chaser is following that groove. Okay, and, and like I said, all I'm doing, um, let, me, let me show you one more view here. All I'm doing is I'm, I'm pulling back on my armrest tool, okay? So here's, here's another shot of that. So my right hand is, is doing nothing. It's just holding the tool there. And as I pull that back, um, the groove is determining how fast my tool is going, not, not my right hand. And while we're in this position here, I'm trying to hold that as perpendicular going into those threads as possible. And I'm, and I'm trying to cut with a lead tooth. All right, I gotta do one more thing. All right, here we go. Now, I don't know if you can see this or not. It's just a little little piece of straight wire. There, there we go. Okay, and I'm gonna hold this onto my thread. And you can see it right there. And what I'm doing is I'm sighting down to my, my bedways. And I've got just a very, very slight taper on that, which, which is fine. There's hardly a taper. And what that means is, you know, it's, it's kind of angled a little bit back like this, just very slight. So I'm looking for as close to uh, parallel as possible on the sides of my threads. And I'm, I'm gonna quit there. I think those are, those are ready to go. One thing I will do before I, I may do a little bit more profiling on, on that uh, outside of my box. Um, I'm gonna reestablish this chamfer and what that does is later on when I'm trying to put my my lid on there, the lids start a little, excuse me, the threads start a little bit easier. Okay, and also this this surface right here has, has got to be as trued up as possible. And that will help you later on because that can that can cause some problems. All right, any questions as we go along there? Now, yes, you got to have some questions. I've got to con have confused a few of you. All right, uh, another question then, if yeah. you're asking for questions. All right. Um, can you also tell when you're done chasing? In other words, when you bottomed out to the, mm. to the teeth, like is that a feel thing or you look? An another really important question and something, you know, it's like I, I can't remember everything, you know, but, but that's a great question. Um, mostly you can, you can look at your threads and if there's a nice peak on that, um, you know, you're, that's all you need to do is just go down to that peak. Now, one, one point I'll make, I don't have my, my 10 or my 12 TPI there, chaser there across the room. Those are made a little bit different. On the, on the valley of those uh, thread chasers and also on the peak, they're a little bit flatter. I'm not sure why that is. So uh, on these, on uh, 16, 18, 20, there's a nice crisp peak on them. And as I get into to doing the, um, the male thread, and, it, and the same applies with the female thread, if you want to continue chasing threads, okay, you, you're, li you're likely to crumble the threads unless you take the, the peaks off with some tool. And try to remind me to, to talk about that when I do the, uh, the male thread. All right, I'm going to just do a, a little bit more on this. Uh, all right. 
Try to keep that, that camera from bouncing around too much. I'm going to turn my dust collector back on just for a little bit. A little bit more speed. I want to reduce the diameter of this quite a bit so it, it looks a little flat in there. keep turning my speed up I'm, I'm going 1200 rpm so it's not terribly fast but oh that was not good all right I'm getting a little vibration out there, so um, you know what I think I'm going to do just while I'm here, I'm going to do just a little bit of sanding on this, just to show you some sanding. Um, and I'm a I'm a big advocate of wet sanding. And what I'm going to do, and, and I, I do sand dry, but just to kind of keep the dust down a little bit. I'm, I'm just putting some mineral oil on this. And you can wet sand with, you know, a lot of different uh, lubricants, if you will. You, you could do water. Um, the only time I ever sand with water is when I've done a, a lacquer piece and I've sprayed five or ten coats of of lacquer on a hollow form and I and I'm I'm assured that the water is not going to get to the wood. What Other grits than that are I they? what's that? What grits are they? Um uh, I this was two twenty and I, and I sanded with the grain. I'm afraid, you know, if I just put this on here, this is fairly coarse, all things considered. I'm gonna leave some scratches, uh, circular scratches going around. This next grit is uh, 320, and if I went all the way, it's, a, it's 1500, which okay. I won't do. So I'm, I'm uh, sanding in reverse, trying to keep that gook off my, my computer. I've, I've got my computer pretty well covered with some plastic stuff. So uh, anyway, that's wet sanding. I'll just show you a couple. I've got, I've got my, my paper stapled together. Um, I, I don't love this shape quite yet. I need to take some more off down here, but uh, I need to move on. There's other things to show you. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm putting the lid in into this. I'm going to start uh, a PowerPoint. Right there. Okay. Um, I got <laughs> Okay. Now, if anybody has a question. Uh, later on, please call me. There's my phone number. I'm sure Kevin has it. He can pass it along. I'm good with phone calls. I, I do not have a problem with people calling me. Um, 
Okay. <laughs> now, if you want further information on any of my demos, you can look on my website, Wyoming Wood Turner. I know what you're thinking, I'm living in Montana. Um, but you can find a lot of information on thread chasing and other topics that I've done over the years. And one thing I'll mention here is a wood list. Uh, probably one of the most important questions to answer is, you know, what kind of wood will, will take a good thread? Uh, and, I'll, and there'll be a wood list here coming up and shortly. That's the you sent me today, correct? Yes. And if I'm going to... On our website, everybody, if you want to see what those are. They're in the documents section of the forum. And, and I'm going to go through this not real slow, let's, let's say. You can always go back and find this information if you really want to. Thread chasing precepts, that has to do with lathe speed, traverse, sharpening tools, which uh, uh, TPI thread chaser would you like? And then wood lists, um, I got my thread chasing article, photos, okay. Now, specific gravity, and this is to me fairly important I got to get my my visual aid here. Okay, um, specific gravity is a comparison of a cubic foot of water at sea level to a cubic foot of wood. So if you have um, a cubic foot of water, I'm not sure what container they put it in, but it weighs <laughs> 62.4 pounds at sea level. So a specific gravity of wood, cubic foot, is, is a one, okay? Um, boxwood is, I think, 0.98, it's almost one. So what you're looking for, if you're looking for thread chasing wood, is a specific gravity of around one or greater. Lignum vitae is maybe the hardest wood in the world, like 1.37 specific And anyway, we'll put that aside. So that's, that's really important, specific gravity, because it has a lot to do with picking the right kind of wood. So if you go on the, the wood database, um, there'll be a, you know, hundreds and hundreds, thousands of different wood species, and you can kind of look at them according to the specific gravity. There's a wood list. Um, one of my favorites beyond boxwood is Mopani. Uh, the specific gravity is 1.08, and then you have boxwood. If you're looking for boxwood, um, this is the only Latin I know, Buccus sempervirens. You have something like Castilian boxwood, which is uh, Spanish, grows in Spain. But I've never had much luck with it. It's, it's too soft for me. Lignum vitae, uh, blackwood, kingwood, uh, something called partridge wood. And some of these woods, in fact, probably... America. Um, mountain mahogany. There, there are not a lot of woods in America that will take a good thread. Mountain mahogany, hornbeam, uh, persimmon, are, are some American hardwoods, and maybe on the East Coast you might have some persimmon or hornbeam, I'm not sure. I, I have pretty good luck with hard maple, and that depends a lot on, on the grain. All right, let's move along here. <clears throat> so thread chasing precepts, that's a fancy term for just some things that are important for success when you're chasing threads. And I hope I cover all these in more detail. Okay, so there's a, whoop, uh, excuse me. Male and female 
thread chaser, the female thread chaser on top. And, and a lot of these pictures are, I, I will send those to Kevin. Good shot of that. And these are recess tools. One thing I don't want you to do is go out and buy a bunch of tools and end up not chasing threads. The very bottom, I've got an Allen wrench I use for um, a recess tool. Works, works just fine. You can make a lot of these. So there's a good cutaway of the male thread in the, and the cutaway of the female thread on the right. And you can see that recess at the bottom of the threads. Point tool. Okay, now I'll, I need to show you this tool. I, di I didn't actually use it, but that's an inside tool. And it's kind of like a lot of the box scrapers we get or we can buy online. Uh, you can make, make these. I made this out of a joiner blade. And, and the angles um, remind me when I, when I get my project back up here, I'll talk about wh why that's important. There's my armrest tool. And I think the rest of these are some of the hollow forms I've done. All these are threaded. Little texturing on the top. And apparently I do a lot of my thread chasing projects with the base that's just one piece. That gives me the option of picking the wood for the, the hand. If this looks like something that Kip Christensen would make, uh, that is inspired, <laughs> inspired by Kip. Okay. Oh, I guess, I guess we're at the end. Okay. Let's go back to the, all right. Now I'm going to move my camera back in here and now I think what I'm going to do to begin with, th this is the lid. Uh, it's probably going to be more like a handle. And I'm going to cut this off right about here. I'm going to just take my parting tool and, and, and cut that in two because I'm not going to use that entire thing. That would be ridiculous. So we'll find a, find a good uh, parting tool. tool rest just just a little bit actually that'll work all right now what what I've done here I, I kind of changed changed my mind a little bit in the middle of this um, you know, where, where is that one cut out that that you that that piece of paper that had no the piece of paper that had that this, this is kind of hard to see. Anyway, this area right here will be the area where my threads are going to be. No, it, it had the little jog, little cutout in it. You, you asked me, it was on the floor. Um, I'm asking my, there, there you are. I'm not sure if this is worth, <laughs> worth, oh, worth, worth getting, but um, there, there we go. That, that may show you a little bit better. So I added this area right here. This is going to be the area where my threads are. Okay. That's fine. 
That actually highlighted a really nice sound. Okay. All right, now I'm going to take a measurement off the opening of my, my base for my little box. Now I'm, I'm doing, I'm marking this more than I'm measuring. Okay, I, I don't really know a measurement on this. I don't know, not important. Yeah, I'm going I'm to double check that just for the heck of it. Okay, all right, now let me see here. I'm going I'm to mark that just on the end grain right here, just to kind of get me. Get me in the ballpark. Okay, now I'm going to find a good, a good tool to uh, reduce that. Could you find me a, a beading and parting tool? All right. wider okay yeah that's really that's really dark <laughs> it's okay I can I can make it with this okay now what I've done here is I've gone back about uh, an eighth of an inch if I went way back here and it in my dimension didn't work then I was in trouble for the entire way. So I, I'm still a little bit large in diameter. Oh, beautiful. Um, my dear wife has been learning how to turn and she's starting to identify tools that I need. Awesome, so I'm, I'm taking a, a, a beading and parting tool and I'm turning left-handed and although you can't see that very well because it's really dark, I'm going to go down and I, I go down a little bit more, but I'm going to put a, a pretty pronounced taper on that. Just put this back up here. Still not quite there. I'm going to leave my, my tool rest back from my piece of wood. Now what I'm doing here is I'm taking that taper off again. And I should be getting fairly close. So you see, this is more of a exercise in, in, in kind of marking. I can feel I'm getting a little closer. Could you see if you could move that light? Just move that chair if you would. Go down just a little bit more. Right there. Now let me, let me make make the point again if if I mess this up this is an eighth of an inch if I mess it up all I've done is mess up an eighth of an inch and I'm, I'm really close I can just kind of feel that starting to uh, be the right size okay little little bit more I think and I'm gonna start making that um, that male tenon a little bit Longer. Yeah. Kind of, kind of level that off a little bit. Right there. Okay, the diameter of this is still too big. Which is fine. Okay. I'm going to try to get my my piece of cardboard back in here. 
Yeah. Let me move this around. Um, that's the trouble. Some woods are just too light and black woods too black. I'd really rather have you actually see what I'm doing here. Okay, there, there we go. All right. Now I'm taking my point tool. Okay, you see why I don't like this? It's like, ah. I sometimes wear rubber gloves when I'm doing this. So I need a chamfer right at the beginning of my threads. Right there. And then I'm going to do um, a recess right in the back of these. Right there. That seems a little dull. That's better. Okay, I'm going to just level that off. The, the nice thing about a point tool is it doesn't take off a lot of wood. You can just really kind of fine tune things. All right, I gotta find my other chaser, my fee, my male chaser. All right, I'm gonna try to do some of this. This is probably the best view for this. Turn my speed down. Now before I was talking about this shoulder right here. Okay, you can, you can see my dilemma. If I'm chasing this and I run into that shoulder, I can strip out my threads. Okay, so I've got a little chamfer on there. And if you're a thread chaser, this is kind of a fine point, but if you can have two of the peaks contacting the chamfer, it's better for you. Okay, it just, it just starts that groove a little bit easier. So. Uh, let's see, chasing speed, I'm about 315. Um, a little slower. I like to be going faster, but I can only go so fast with that, that shoulder in there. Now, right now, I don't have a groove in there. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm determining the traverse. Okay, so I'm, I'm kind of coming in there, starting with a second or third tooth. Now you can, you can start to see some of those shavings. Okay, that means my tool is, is pretty sharp. Now I've got a groove. Okay, so all I gotta do, put that in there. And that groove is determining the speed of my tool. And I'm, I'm slowly going to move that around. So I'm, I'm pretty much perpendicular. Okay. Trying to cut with a lead tooth. I'll move my camera for just a second here. Um, yeah. Are you stopping? Excuse me. Are you stopping just before the shoulder or are you actually touching the shoulder? No, I, I don't want my tool to touch the shoulder. And I'm okay. going to make another, another point here. Let's see if I can. Yeah, that's not going to help. <laughs> let, let me kind of expand on that comment. Um, as, I, as I chase my thread, Cheryl? What was that? You turned the light out? Oh, my wife just freaked me out. She turned the light out. I thought I was losing power. Sorry. Um, <laughs> so what I want to do, and I'm going to just move this by hand. Right before my tool touches that shoulder, I want to take it away. Okay. Mm -hmm. if, if I'm engaged in the thread and, and my tool touches that shoulder, I can strip my my thread out. Okay, right. now let me show you the way to really do this. This takes a little practice. Okay, so we're looking at the end view camera here. And what I'm going to do is when I get near that shoulder, I'm going to lower my tool handle. And that disengages the, the cutting area of my thread chaser. Okay, let me just do that. So
Now I'm gonna I'm gonna test my thread, my connection here before I get too too crazy. Okay. I'd rather have it too big than messed up. So what I'm gonna do, and I've I've actually got a a fairly good peak on those at the very beginning. So what I want to do is take off a little bit of that uh, crest and continue chasing. If I if I continue chasing my thread right now, they're apt to crumble. Go up to turning speed. Reestablish my my chamfer. I do a little bit more chasing. Checking my speed here. I'm I'm right at 300 now. Here's another one of those fine points. Once my groove is established, I can turn the speed down a little bit. All right. Now maybe from this angle, you can see what I'm doing. Now my 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 thread, my groove is determining the traverse of the tool, and to cut, I'm pushing in. So the, the best thing to do is just, still too big, I'm going to go down a little bit more with my point tool. And I'm going to reestablish that chamfer. As I continue to chase my thread, the chamfer sort of disappears. And I'm going to come out here, put a little bit more of a, a thread on the very beginning of my, my male tenon. Let's see if we can, oh look at that. We're in the ballpark. Sort of. <laughs> okay, I, I think that, you know, the first layer is okay, but I need to keep keep going back. Now I'm going to add one more thing here. There's there's a thousand things you can do or or kind of keep in mind as you're chasing threads. I got a little bit of mineral oil. And sometimes I use a wax mixture that's loosened up with a little mineral oil. This lubricates my threads. There. Let me check my speed. I'm yeah, I'm, I'm going to slow my speed down just a little bit. I'm at 280. Lower my handle as I get, get near that. Now here's another fine point, if you will. That's 90 degrees to my threads. And once the, the thread is established on the first or second layer, I don't want to cut any more there. I want to take my tool and actually go past 90 degrees, just a little bit. And I'm, I'm cutting with the lead tooth. All right, let's see if we're, if we're any closer. Look at that. Better to be lucky than good, I don't know. Okay, so I need to be real careful here. Um, one thing I'm going to look at, and I apologize, you can't see it any better, is my, my recess back here. As you chase your thread, you end up eliminating that recess. It just becomes kind of a, a level area of wood. So I'm going to reestablish it and that may allow my uh, base of my box to go on a little bit farther. Yeah. 
And I'm going to take the the crest of those off just just a little bit. Now I'm going to do just a little bit more thread chasing. Sometimes this goes really fast. This is probably more typical of of how long it takes to uh, make a connection. But I don't want to go too far, too fast. A little bit more. They're really good. I, I'm happy with these threads. Sometimes that's all you have to go by. I'm going to put a little bit more mineral oil on that. Okay. Now I'm going to do one one more thing. There there's a lot involved in this. <laughs> I'm going to take and level off this surface right here. See if we can see that. Yeah. I'm just taking my point tool right right in here. All right. Okay, I need to make a point. I got to find something, pardon me. Yeah. All right, this will this will work. Um, Cheryl, there there was a piece of PVC pipe in that. Yeah, right there. <laughs> Okay, I, I need to make a point here. It's pretty important. As I make my connection between the base and my lid, this flat surface needs to uh, connect perfectly with that uh, shoulder right there. Now, I'm going to kind of get into the weeds a little bit here. This is a, a PVC connection, okay? Male, male thread, female thread. And what prevents your wooden threads from getting too tight is that shoulder, okay? If I'm a little bit, you know, like not quite contacting that shoulder with this, this part of my threads, it tightens up too much. You gotta have that kind of connect with that, uh, that shoulder. Now, piece of PVC pipe, PVC. <laughs> See, if this is a video, I could cut that out. But <laughs> anyway, on this connection, we don't have that same situation. If you've done any kind of plumbing, I've done a little bit of plumbing, you can take two wrenches and just tighten the, the heck out of this. This stuff is sturdy enough to, to make a good connection. But if you do this in wood, you may, you may never get them apart. So that shoulder flat surface connection is really important okay i hope that made sense i'm going to put it on here and see <laughs> see how i did okay i think i, I know you can't see that I'm, i apologize um I've, I've got a good connection there stop wiggling around i don't know it's it's <clears throat> it's a little bit tight yeah, and see, see, this is just what I'm talking about. You may have a hard time, oh my gosh, later on getting that apart. Okay, so I'm going to do just a little bit more chasing on that so I can get them apart later. All right. And, and what I'm basically doing is I'm loosening up that connection. It'll be okay, but it'll be, it'll go on a little bit further.
At the very beginning, I'm going to I'm going to put a little bit of a taper on there. Okay. Yeah, if I do any turning on my lid later on, I'm going to be I'm going to be in trouble. I'm going to reestablish my my recess back here. Okay. Um, I, I'm going to reverse this and work a little bit on the lid. So if you have any questions, now would be a good time as I mess around with this a little bit. Could you find me another point tool? That thing is really dull. <sighs> so really all my, my thread chasing is completed. One, one thing you can look at when you're chasing threads, I've got my, <laughs> thank you, I've got my connection made and this is running fairly true. That tells me that my, my connection is good and uh, my threads are pretty much lined up fairly well. Okay, see if I can lose that camera again. Okay, I'm going to bring my tail center up. And I'm going to reverse this. So here I've got my, my base and my lid done to this point. Put that back in. Oh, you know what? I, I did mark that. There, there it is. This will help. Any questions? Mm -hmm. All right, tighten that down. Now I, I probably still have quite a bit of, um, I don't know, height on there that I don't need. Maybe, maybe a little bit anyway. Now if I'm alone in my shop, I know, I know what I'm going to do. If I'm alone in my shop, uh, I may not bring my tail center up because if, if I embarrass myself, nobody is there to see it. Oh. Um, what I'm looking for is just a little bit of, a little bit of wax. And if I, if I put a little bit of wax in here, um, that may make that easier to, to come apart later or not I don't know I've, I've also got one of those little little wrenches that plumbers use got a little little rubber ring on it I actually had to use that in a recent thread chasing demo so um, let's turn this on see how it's running this is running pretty true. Uh, this is not, obviously. So I'm going to just uh, work a little bit on that lid. Please, if you have any questions, I'd love to hear, hear you. Okay. Find my Spindle roughing gouge. This is a handle I made when I was traveling. Do you remember when we used to travel? <laughs> Other than going to our Barker lounger in the living room? It's an ancient concept. Uh, I, I miss those days. I miss going to wood turning symposium so bad. Now, I, I sense that I'm I'm not I've got a I've got a center point in the top of my my lid finial 
<clears throat> and I'm going to take a tool and just erase that little indentation there and start over so I can kind of reestablish that center. Okay, I think that should do it. About 80% of what I've learned um, beyond learning in kindergarten, I learned from Cindy Drozda. So I've got my, my lathe running and the best way to center that up is have your lathe running This particular live center came with my robust lathe and I can adjust that point. So I've got that sticking out about a millimeter. All right, now we'll put that, put that back on there. I think I loosened up a little bit. Lock her down. Okay. bring my overhead camera back in here. Now this area right here is way too big in diameter because I want that to flow a little bit better into that lid. Now I want that bevel pointing in the direction I'm cutting. So that's a good angle right there. I'm going to go to my my beading and parting tool and just take a lot of this down. I'm going to make this into a handle. go back to my my Fibonacci golden mean. I suspect most of you know who Fibonacci was. Italian mathematician of the 13th century. I'm, I'm in pretty good shape there. I think that's quite long enough. Um, a good friend of mine from my Warland club came in my shop one day and gave me this. Um, he passed away about six weeks ago. So this is very special to me. Okay, sorry about that. Um, I'm loving that Fibonacci caliper. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And, and I think 
it, it was something I never would have bought, but I really like it. It's, it's really neat, but you can make them. And I'm just seeing if this will come off there. Yeah, okay, not bad. All right. Now, I'm looking maybe 15, 20 minutes left. You're doing fine, Sam. Time is good. All right. Now, a lot of times when I'm using this lathe, um, I don't have my headstock on, okay? Uh, I'm doing this mostly because this is a demonstration and I don't want to embarrass myself too much. Um, but sometimes I just do this without any tailstock support and it works out okay. And like I said, if, if it doesn't, nobody is watching. <laughs> Okay, let's do a little bit more profiling on this. come back out here and finish this up I think before I go any further This is the tool I'm looking for. This is a maybe a quarter inch spindle gouge, detail gouge. I'm going to work on that area down here. That looks pretty good. to find my my piece of paper we'll get this back in here okay I'm gonna bring in another tool this is a a D-Way box master scraper uh, it's a negative rake scraper and I'm always showing this in my video, so I, I want to get in here. Actually, I was going to work on that, sorry. You, you can turn this tool around. This side right here is for the inside of a box, and the other end is for the outside. That's yeah, a really nice tool. Getting some really, really nice shavings off that. Yeah. You know. Okay. I'm going to go back to this. This is actually a, a quarter inch bowl gouge. And why would I use a bowl gouge in this situation? It it's going to vibrate a lot less. Okay. Lower my tool rest with all this junk in the way. All right. A little bit more speed on this. I 
don't know if I've got a better angle. Let's, uh, this camera here, why don't you zoom that in? Or maybe, huh? Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> okay. I'm going to remove my tail center for a second and work on this very top of this finial handle. Round that over. Then I can be a little bit more forceful with my cut. Uh, that stupid black wood. I'm gonna go I'm gonna go back overhead. Okay. Now, because I finished this bit up here, I can't bring my tail center back up. I make another hole in there. So I'm going to turn my speed up, which is going to offer a little bit less resistance to my cut. There. I'm going to call that good. If I were alone working on this, I'd spend a little bit more time working on that. Nice. Now, this particular camera right here, if you're a demonstrator doing this sort of thing, you don't want uh, a zoom or uh, an auto focus on this camera. So I can't really um, bring this in any closer. It's just kind of a, I can't even adjust it because it takes too long to do that and, and refocus it. Now, oh, look at that. I did something right. Now, now we can take a look at this a little better. Maybe. Uh, well, I know, let me, let me just see if I can. All right, I get my white paper. The wife says get the white paper. <laughs> I can't, it's like, ah. Uh, That's nice. I, I, I wonder if I should just go back overhead. No, that's not bad. And, you know, I call that more of a handle than I do a, a, a finial. It's cer certainly not a Cindy Drozda finial by any means. Now, let me just go through what I do to finish something like this up. Let me, let me take this out of my, my chuck. Um, I'm thinking, I'm thinking just, and I can, and I can do this. Oh. No, I just, no. My wife asked if I wanted something to wipe my hands. Um, you can see in this camera, I've got uh, a diamond hone on, on the top of my banjo. So I'm gonna just put a little bit of sharpen on this parting tool. And I think I'm gonna just part that off. What I was gonna say is at this point, there's a number of ways I can reverse this. Um, 
As I mentioned before, I don't like this right here. It needs to come in a little bit more, but I can do that later on. I can reverse this, take my lid out, and reverse this into a scrap chuck, a screw chuck, going the other direction, and I can finish the, the bottom of that off. Now, if you look at this, I don't know if you can see this over overhead, from the bottom of my wood to right here, I bet it's I bet it's three fourths of an inch. So it's it's a little easier if I just part this off. So I just wanted a little bit more of a sharp edge on this tool. You want to come over and catch this? You want to come over and catch this? I've got about an eighth of an inch down there. Why don't you come right back here and get a little closer? I could, you know, I could almost... Well, maybe, maybe I can do it. <laughs> it it's fine. Let me, let me, let me get this. There we go. That, that's really my preferred method of parting off. Do that left-handed, and it worked. Um, I was really concerned about getting a, a run back on that. No. Boy, oh boy. I think my my mirror imaging thing is is on i'm going the wrong direction but there that's a pretty good view of that okay I, I need a little bit of fine tuning i need to do some more shaping and sanding the lid is in pretty good shape okay and what i could do is i could just take the bottom of this make a, a female recess and put my lid in there just screw the lid right in there make a make a screw chuck and finish this off, I could do a little bit more sanding on it. And I can do the same thing with my my base. I've got a whole drawer full of um, chaseable wood that I'd make uh, screw chucks with. All right. Um, I think we're, we're getting close. So if you have any, any questions. Sam? Yes. I, I have a question. If you had, if you had chased an item and finished an item and the item had been sitting for a while and the threads were rather tight and you wanted to loosen that up, could you, what, what method would you suggest uh, to maybe sand those threads down a little bit or loosen that up? Um, I was thinking maybe a, uh, uh, sanding mop, fine sanding mop. Great question. And I bet you guys have a lot more. I'm, I'm looking for one of my thread chasers. Just hang on here. That's if the wood is swelled up a bit. Yeah. Here, here's one, one method that you can do. Okay. And I'm, I'm just getting, <clears throat> just getting a female thread chaser. So here's my base. It's got the internal female thread right there. If you need to loosen this up a little bit, what you can do is just take your, your thread chaser by hand and just put it in there. And you can almost probably hear that. And this has happened to me before, um, that exact thing. Or the situation where I sometimes will... Um, 
Um, put CA glue in there to fortify the threads. There's some gunk and, and stuff left in there. Uh, it could be wax, it could be, you know, finish that got on there. But this isn't a bad way to do this. It's hard to do it with a male thread, but with a female thread, you can just keep working that down and, and try and try and your, your threads. Um, what, what I may do with this particular little box, since this is not hollowed out properly, um, I probably will put a temporary tenon on this. Very easy. Uh, I could make a bead and, and put that back in there and complete the inside of this because I do want to, you know, complete this particular little project. <clears throat> I need to make one more point that I didn't make before because I, I skipped some, some steps when I was doing this. Um, before I do my female thread, okay, this is pretty important, but you'll, you'll probably pick this up when you watch some videos on thread chasing. You want the inside hollowed out, sanded, and a finish applied before you chase your threads, okay? Because if you, like in this situation right here, I gotta be really careful. I go back in there with a hollowing tool. I don't mess up my threads. Okay, but I kind of, I, I skipped quite a bit. And, you know, we're, we're pretty much right in the ballpark for completing this. It would have taken me another 15 minutes that I didn't want to, I didn't want to take. Okay, questions, please. How do you no. sharp the tools, the, the chasing tools? How do I sharpen them? Yeah. Um, let me... That's a good question. Let me, let me, I'm, I don't know if I sent Kevin the video I did on the sharpening, but I will make sure I, I get that to him. Let me, let me readjust and I'll. That'll work right there. Okay. Let's, let's pretend this is my uh, sharpening stone right here. Okay. So I'm going to put that right on there. And I don't know if you can see that or not. Yes. But you know, it, that's, that's all it amounts to. You just put that on there and you're, you're sharpening the top of your thread chaser. You know, it's a negative rake scraper and you, you never do anything with the front of these. Never, never just the top of that until you reach the, the cutting edge. And there you have it. In fact, that might be a better, just a round surface is what I'm getting at here. So question, I'm assuming that when you got no more thread points left, you toss that thing in the garbage. Um, I, I've got one, oh, I don't know if, <laughs> let, all right, let me, let me, that, that's a really good question. I, I've been chasing threads for like 10, 11 years, and I've got one set that there's hardly anything left to. Okay, now one, this is a female thread chaser. All right, let me get this in just a little bit closer. And one thing the, that will happen is, you see the ones that are all worn out, the other rack, this, this dimension right here, you can, you can reduce that. You can grind this back off. And what that allows you to do is to get into a very small recess and chase threads. No, no, they're real, there's, there's nothing left to them. Anyway, um, that, and that's important. I've made that one, um, especially the female thread chaser, narrow in this dimension and I can get into uh, like a 3 16 inch recess. Otherwise you have to tap it and that's what you can do with that. So, but yeah, eventually there's not going to be anything left to that, that tool. But I always go back to honing at this point. I never put that back on the grinder because it wouldn't take much uh, for that to just, you know, totally disappear. <laughs> yeah, I you mean, really have to uh, grind it or couldn't you just hone it every so often? I ju just hone it. Yep, exactly. Yeah, let, let me 
Let me bring you in another. I mean, with any thread chaser, just use honing as opposed to. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. That's a that's a very good point. I'm going to bring you into another another camera. This is the my banjo with the the diamond hone I've got on top of that. What's the grid on that? Um. Oh my gosh, you're asking me. I don't know. This this is an Allen laser tool. And they're they're wonderful, but I like to have something flat on my either my bedways or on the banjo. Now the bedways on this particular lathe are stainless steel, and you can't put anything uh, magnetic on them. All right. So here's a here's my female thread chaser, and I just what what I've discovered. It's better if you don't go back and forth. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come to this position, put some pressure down onto it, and, and draw it back. And then go back, find my bevel, and draw it back. And, and you can just see the tip of the, uh, the thread chaser starting to get polished. If I can find my... And it's probably easier to, to hone the, the male chaser, so, but the same thing. Find my bevel, just draw it back. And it doesn't take much. And I can and I can see I've just touched the, the cutting edge of that. There you go. Yeah, but that's a good question. And that really saves the steel on your on your tool. They'll, they'll last a lot longer, but the reality is they last a long time. <clears throat> they really do. I find I hope if, I, I hone, if I hone stuff that way, you don't take as much metal off. They do last a while. And it's just like um, honing the top of a, a traditional scraper, which I happen to have one here. I, I talked about the, uh, the box scraper before. And here's, here's a... Carter and Son box scraper, <clears throat> but it's that same profile. Now, this one has a flat top, so they're very easy to, to hone. All right, you just put them, put them on something and, and just hone that, that top flat part. So yeah, just, and, and that's all uh, thread chasers are. They're just scrapers. Oh, that's right, thank you. <clears throat> I was going to show you the the Carter and Son thread chaser. These are 16s, and it's got Mike Mahoney's name on it. Uh oh, he's going to want that back. <laughs> I don't I don't know if you all know Mike. Um, this is the the male chaser, and I I want to get this in a better camera just to show you. Th this is a really cool design. So this goes in, in the wood in this orientation. Stop camera. So on the back of my hand, you see this area right here that's, that's cut away. The reason for that is uh, as you chase your thread, this part of the thread chaser doesn't contact the shoulder as badly. It will up up in the front, but that's a good design. That's really cool. And then you have the other, the female chaser on the other end. They work great. The problem is, if you lose one, you lose both of them. Okay? Or if you find one, I found my female chaser, well, anyway. The, the problem with these Zoom meetings, you, you, you don't know if people are laughing at you or laughing with you or are they still, are you awake? Ah, I mean, my jokes are terrible. You should be like throwing stuff at me. The, the one thing I, I would change, and I'm, and I'm not going to do anything with this tool. The, the handle to me is a little um, bulbous. Is that the right word? I like it to be a little bit more like a, like a football shape. But other than that, it works. It works great. Just takes a little bit of uh, getting used to. 
another I question. Round, I would think the round handle makes it harder to keep it parallel. Well, you know, when, once you're on the tool rest, it, it kind of keeps it in position, but it's more just the feel of it. And, and it's like, you know, I've, I'm used to these. I'm used to a pair of thread chasers. So that's, <clears throat> that's part of it. And if you've never chased threads, start with that one. You know, they're, they're excellent. Do you put any finish on the threads? Mm, good question. Do I put any finish on the threads? No, I don't. Okay. Um, other than, you know, like as I'm chasing the thread, I may have some wax on there or something like that. You can actually take the, uh, where's my lid? <laughs> you can actually take the, the, the male threads <clears throat> and buff them. And that works pretty, pretty well. That just kind of smooths them over a little bit. But no, I don't put, a, put any finish on there. Okay. Yeah, I did, I did okay. Sometimes I do better with thread chasing in a demonstration because I'm more careful. If I'm out here by myself, it's like, I hope for the best. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I think that'll be pretty cool. It's just totally gunked up with this black stuff. I'm not going to turn that anymore in a, vid in a demo. Find something else. Uh, I, I did look around my shop for something that would go with this lignum vitae, and it's got a little, you know, dark, light grain, and I couldn't really find anything that was just a solid color other than this black wood. It's a pretty piece, though. It came nice. It'll it'll be okay. <laughs> and, <laughs> and as I tell myself, the next one will be better. <laughs> That's really a cop out, but <laughs> I don't know. I think it was pretty good. Any anyone else have questions for Sam? Otherwise, they're going to thank him for his time. Really nice demo, Sam. Thank you. Probably way beyond my skill set, but I'll try no. it someday. No, no. I'm, I'm going to try to get this in. That's the wrong camera. Oh. So we were all perfect. Money we're going to spend after this demo, and between the armrest tool, <laughs> tool, and the uh, the uh, Fibonacci calipers, I think we're this is a pretty good one. I'm only going to come away with about 150 in spending, right? So. <laughs> okay, now the lady that came on just a second ago and said this is, be, you know, beyond her skill level. I got to tell you a little story, and you can find this video. Um, I've got, well, right now I got five granddaughters. My two oldest ones were out here chasing threads one day, and we made a video. So they were probably 10, 12 years old at that time. So if you think this is beyond your skill level, find that video. And watch them. I don't really know how I feel about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm exaggerating. I'm exaggerating a little bit, but uh, they actually did chase a little bit, and it's it's not that hard. Just do it. <laughs> I don't think I think my brain can't wrap around the concept of the tool getting right back into the right groove. I don't understand how it works, but it looks really cool. Yeah, well, you know, one thing you can do, and, and j just to practice, I've also got a video on uh, teaching aids for thread chasing. I mean, just all kinds of ideas. And this is the, uh, the cutoff from the lid, okay, that, that other part that I cut off. Well, I don't know, I didn't mention it to you, but I've actually got <clears throat> threads on here. So before I put that, you know, made a, made a tenon out of it, I chased some threads on there just to see how it would do. I got pieces of wood all over the shop that have threads on them just to see if I could chase a thread in Boobinga or whatever it was. Um, it's just practice. You know, don't be afraid. Just do it. And What happens to the wood that, do, that can't be chased? Like, why can't it be chased? What happens to it? Oh, e excellent question. <clears throat> The, the best wood that will take a thread is um, diffuse porous wood, which means the difference is kind of leveled out, the difference between the 
the hard grain and the soft grain, the, the spring growth and the late summer growth. Uh, like boxwood, you can hardly see the grain, okay? Right. Some wood, I mean, there's a lot of them, ash and oak and, you know, Russian olive. They're, they're too much of a ring porous grain. Right. And, and they're really difficult to chase the thread in. So you want something dense. Um, boxwood is a good example because it's not the, the hardest, densest wood in the world, but it takes a great thread because uh, the grain is just, it's almost like there's just one grain in there. Okay. How about, how about something like purple heart? Um, <laughs> I've never had much, much uh, luck with it. Okay. And, and actually, I've done pretty well with hard maple. I'm not sure why, but sometimes I think it's more more the grain structure where the, you know, the end grain is. You know, if you look at it, sometimes it runs out and it'll crumble. You can chase threads, by the way, in cross grain pieces of wood. Uh, and sometimes it's almost easier, but the, it's going to warp. You know, that, that wood may warp on you. Mm -hmm. Okay. But, how, how about about holly or pear? You know, holly does pretty well. Uh, I don't have any pear. Uh, I had pear to turn one big bowl, and I've never tried chasing threads in it. But if you look at that wood list, um, mopani is wonderful. Uh, Kingwoods, rosewood. There's a bunch of woods you can find that will take a a good thread. Pink ivory. But it's really expensive, but it takes a great thread. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Great. Oh, and, and the other thing, I mentioned the, the PVC pipe. <laughs> you can actually uh, chase threads in this and practice. And, and, there, and, and just take, th this is a, a coupler, and they're usually thicker. And you can, you can chase the female and the male threads on two different pieces and make a connection. And that's a good, it's cheap, uh, which is one of the problems with practicing chasing threads. The wood's a little bit expensive to just waste. So what, what's a good brand name for the tools, the chasing tools? Um, you know, the, the one that I... Oh, I can't find it anyway. <clears throat> the the one that I would, if I had to pick one tool, it'd be the one that Craft Supplies sells. I think it's it's called Waves and and Warwick. The name isn't important, but it's the only one that Craft Supplies uh, sells. It's the one in the sharpening video with a really short little handle. This is a uh -huh. Robert Sorby, and the handles don't need to be that long. I mean. Right, right to there, that's all you need. And, and that's why I like those other ones. Um, they, all, they all do a pretty good job with uh, thread chasing. Uh -huh. You know, find the cheapest one. The, the one I used to, if, if you're familiar with Hartville Tool in Ohio, um, if you can get on their website, if they still have them, it's free shipping. And, you know, what, the last time I bought thread chasers, they were 80 bucks or something. You know, and, and that's and they're just perfectly fine. What's the name of that place in Ohio? Hartville Tool. That's an Amish Hartville. country. I, I grew up about 20 minutes from there and spent a lot of my money in high school when my friends were buying clothes. I was buying block plane blades. Block Is that the planes. name of Hartville? Hartville Tool. Is, is that the name of the town? The town's Hartville, Hartville. but okay. Hartville Tool started out <clears throat> as a little um, oh, hardware store. It wasn't any bigger than my garage here. And you can't believe, anyway, I won't bore you with the details, but uh, it's really cool if you're ever around that part of the world. Got to wash okay. my hands. And Norm, correct me if I'm wrong. I think we get a club discount from them too, Hartville. Ooh. It, it's been a while since I bought any thread chasers. Yeah, I just put uh, the link up on the chat for the wood printers catalog um, for the, uh, the ones that they sell. And it's a uh, Mason Warwick is what it's called. Yeah. 
So, Sam, thank you. I, um, if we don't have any other questions for Sam, thank you very much. For your thank job. you. And your wife for uh, putting up for us on the demo work and whatnot. So. Just call me if you have a question. I really enjoyed it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. See you guys. Thanks yes, a lot, Sam. Thank you so much, Sam. Bye-bye. Sam, Bye -bye. Sam if you want to take Sam and just send me anything else as far as backup documentation, just send it to me. I'll put it up on our website. Um, we really appreciate it. Thank you again. Okay. Thanks. See you guys. Stay safe. Be safe. All right, everybody. Bye. I'm going to end the meeting for everyone. Have a good night, and we'll talk to you all soon.